Hey guys, Jeff at Hubie's Garage and uh, just uh, got some things in the mail for the gasser so I thought I'd go over what came in. Uh, these are some packages that came in, I don't know, UPS, FedEx. I know we got some stuff from Summit here, got some stuff from Towel City. Uh, some other things that came in, I went and dealt with, uh, I, I actually... Believe it or not, the, the, the wheels here, the 15 by 10s, I got those from Summit. There are some steelies. I'll show you those in a second. But uh, here's the first one that got cracked open. And this is a must to have for the gasser. This one right here is uh, needed in order to run the car at the drags. Um, the helmet I had was, um, I've got an open face that I could use. And then I also... Uh, went ahead and got a new uh, Pyrotech. I'm a Bell helmet guy, so it's kind of sad. They didn't really have a good, uh, decent Bell helmet that I could find. Uh, Bell is kind of through the roof with their prices. And I'm not even sure who owns Bell anymore, but uh, my kid had just bought a, a Pyrotech for his Nova that he was gonna use when he starts doing autocross in the car. And he was actually invited to the Moon New Year's party, uh, but he didn't have time to get it NHRA certified or get you know get the the rules set up. So he bought a helmet. Uh, he bought a flat black helmet. Um, I'm old school. I like the gloss, the old gloss black. But looks like uh, this is the helmet right here. So real nice Pyrotech. I know. Um, pretty sure John Force uses these, uh, but. Real nice helmet. Um, let's give it a try, see if it fits. So we can do this without destroying the microphone and my glasses. But yeah, I haven't, haven't made a pass in any of my cars since 97. So, um, kind of funny. I, let's, let's give this a try here. All right. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear me, but yeah, this fits perfect. So, yeah, real real happy with this. This this fits perfect. So, got the Joe Rockhead version. Got the bigger head, I guess. <laughs> I had other friends that had bigger heads than me, so luckily I didn't get teased as much. But All right, so that one's all ready. We're all ready for Moon Eyes with that. So, I've got a legal Snell approved helmet. So that should work great. So we'll set that one aside, put it in the box, and then on to the next goodie. So, all right. So, oh, glasses. Can't do anything without my readers. All right. So this one. So it's from Crow Safety, so I know what this is. These are my seat belts. And I don't want to cut across the purchase order. Oops. Or the work order. Receipt. I like to keep receipts because then you you know exactly how much money you spent, you know when you bought stuff. If there's any warranty or issues of something not lasting, you got a record of it. But what I had done is I sent my old belts to Fred Crow. Fred Crow is an old uh, gasser uh, guy. He ran one of the, um, uh, he, he ran a 55 Chevy back in the day. A, I can't remember the D-gas or an E-gas car, but it was JNS Speed Center. Not JNS Gears, but JNS Speed Center. And uh, uh, Fred has been a guy that we've met from long ago back in our junior drag racing days. And just what a great guy. He, he remembers my car, sent him some pictures of it, and uh, yeah, he was pretty excited to hear that, that uh, one of the cars that he used to run against is back out again. So, uh, sent him my belts as is. So, these are good until June of 2025. These are my shoulder belts, and these are my lap belts. So, this is some nice stuff. And he sent me a diaper harness, or what they call a submarine strap in which I'm going to have to attach this to the back of the roll bar under the seat somehow because I believe NHRA requires it, so it's part of the latch system. But this is nice. 
yeah. All right, cool. So we're good to go for that. Get those bolted back in so I can be legal. And I don't know what we'll do with my old belts. They're not gonna be good for anything because they're way, way out of cert. All right, so that's out of the way. Um, keep the invoice with that. That was the top cover. Uh, here was an item from Summit. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are my NGK racing plugs. So the um, went through a little bit of a an issue with that. Um, so let's see if I can do this here. It looks like it's kind of a weird, weird box. Um, trying to figure out what I should do because I I used to run. AC 44S plugs on, on all my small blocks. Um, talked with some guys, actually talked with Uncle Tony, uh, asked him some questions on one of his lives, and the overwhelming decision was that uh, Autolite or NGK are the hot plugs today. The 44S is from AC, aren't even made anymore. AC got bought out. You know the story. Um, but I managed to get a hold of NGK. Um, NGK, as you guys know, is one of the decals that's on the side of the car. So I thought, well, why not? You know, they sponsored them back in the day. They got free plugs from them. Let's run them again. Got the stickers. Why not? So call. they have a hotline. Uh, NGK has a hotline. You can call and talk to a tech, and they will give you the exact recommendation for your application. I tried to do it online, but there were so many variables with the car that... I couldn't get the computer to figure out, so I actually had one of the guys look it up. Uh, he recommended a, uh, this is a, it's, it's R, it's an R plug, which R typically, back in the day, it typically meant resistor. Well, in this case, the R stands for racing, and I specifically wanted a non-resistor plug. Well, the racing plugs are non-resistor. Uh, you don't have to worry about RFI interference, stuff like that. You get the full power of the plug. So he, on the hotline, recommended an R5670, and he recommended a Dash 6, I believe. He did say that you could go with a hotter Dash 5, and I thought that was unusual because most of the hotter spark plugs go up in number, well, NGK's numbers for hotter plugs go down in number. So I ordered the 5670-5, a little bit of a hotter plug. I may get some sixes, but I think it should be fine in this motor. So I've got a full set of fresh plugs to run at the drags. That was always my thing. I changed plugs, changed the oil, got everything ready maintenance-wise. And then when I went to the drags, I typically didn't change anything while there while racing. I did in the time trials, but not when racing. And the reason I didn't do that, I didn't make any changes, is because we were in the middle of bracket racing. And if you make a change while you're bracket racing, it could throw off your dial in, it could throw off your ETs, uh, your mile per hour, whatever. And you don't want to do that. You want to stay consistent so that your dial in is not something you have to worry about. And hopefully it'll continually run that number. So. All right, so got a set of plugs. Now, um, the next thing was the, oops, the next thing was, throw my speaker wire out of the way or my microphone. Um, these I had already opened. And the reason that I had already opened them is because they came from Summit Primered. They're stock steel wheels, and I didn't want to run them on the slicks on the car primered. So I went back to the company who had originally done all the powder painting on the car before. I had had the front wheels powder painted. They have a really special, unique, deep, dark blue. Um, uh, Matt, the owner, uh, as well as Chris, the uh, two brothers that own Orange County, Orange County uh, Powder Coating. Uh, I, believe, um, I believe Chris did these personal. And the reason is, is because he just loves powder painting wheels. And these came out really, really nice. Uh, the reason I pulled them out of the box was because, number one, I wanted to test fit them, and you'll see that. I do have the rims, and I do have the tires, and I want to see how they'll look uh, on the gasser. So let's pull this off, do a little test fit.
got these long studs. I might take a little bit here. Should have my speed wrench. I'm gonna get these things powder powder painted gloss black. So I'll see if I can get that done tomorrow. See if their turnaround time is the same. Alright, so So, Chevy lug pattern. I did convert this Pontiac rear end to a Chevy lug pattern so I wouldn't have any issues with wheels. So that was another added bonus here, but uh, everything fits on real nice. Okay, so we got it mounted on. Looks like we got plenty of room. These are 15 by 10s. They've got a four and a half inch backspace and they actually look really good. I'm surprised that these come out that way. It's probably gonna look pretty good with that tire, with that pie crust, but I'd say one and a half to two inches of clearance on the leaf springs. That's great. I will try the pie crust. I guess uh, these are directional. Uh, this is a brand new tire carcass that's got a retread uh, pie crust. You can see the, the ribs there. Uh, very old school. In fact, they even have a pie crust only drags in Byron, Illinois. Uh, it'd be fun to go to that one someday. So I'm guessing the tire's going to stick out about that far. That looks pretty good. Looks real good, in fact. Let's see. Yeah. That's the old school look right there. So, should have a lot of fun with this one. Just gotta get those rims powder painted. Get those things in, see if they'll be done. Otherwise, I'll be running on primered 15 by 10s. Amazing how much better it looks like with the pie crust versus these old stock rollers. So we'll go from here, see what it does. And those guys were amazing. They had a one day turnaround time to get these suckers painted. So uh, nice job. They're gonna go really well with these new towel cities. And uh, I won't have to worry about those old And I won't have to I won't have to worry about those old uh, MH Race Masters that I had so um, that were on the car before the ones with the inner tubes that just there was all kinds of problems with those so okay well let's pop open the Towel City uh, pie crust see what we got let's see get some of the get some of the Saran wrap off. A little bit of rubber here. Now these are recaps. They're, they're factory original, brand new tires that they basically vulcanize a pie crust, pie crust um, outer uh, tread to the carcass. I specifically ordered these non-white wall, no ribs. You can see the vulcanized process through it. Um, and it looks like they have an inside, so they're directional. So we'll mount that on the inside. And these will go on these will go on the new 15 by 10s. So that's pretty close to about what they'll look like. So I'll have to get these things. I'll probably probably just put them on my um on my tire sh machine and um spin them on if i'm real careful with them and uh get them on the rim uh, i'll have to go buy some probably have to go to o'reilly's or autozone buy some chrome stems and then um mount them on the rims and then uh, uh go take them to my tire shop that i go to and have them uh, balanced. So anyway, um, that's 
almost it. We got one more item. Put this uh, Towel City slick. It's hey, this is a nice slick. I can't. I, I think the tread width is ten and a half, but they go perfect for the. Uh, they go perfect on the fifteen by ten uh, wheels, so it should fill up that wheel well, real nice. So see that a little bit later because I am going to test fit them. Uh, last item was my six cylinder radiator. So I took this over to Gary's radiator in Fullerton and uh, they have uh, a guy there that's, that's just awesome. His name's Bob. Bob's the owner and um, it's just an old school radiator shop. I mean they do everything there. They do brass, uh, brass repairs, um, you know, they basically, with this one, they put a new core on it. Uh, they used my old bottom tank, which is a manual transmission tank. There's no cooler in it. It's not a power glide. This one is a six cylinder manual transmission radiator. And it's surprisingly, it's, it's date coated. So what ended up happening was, is I took the radiator out of the gasser, took it over to, 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 to Bob. Bob went through it, pressure tested it, found out that there was a real bad leak right here on the top of the tank. So he, he was gonna use one of his tanks. Well, I had a spare radiator that my buddy Tom uh, Ordway gave me, uh, another six cylinder. Uh, that radiator was a 55F, and the radiator that I had was a 55H. So they're within two months of each other. And uh, so what Bob did is Bob gave me a call. He said, hey, we got a bad tank and a bad core. I gotta get you a core. And I, I think I could find a tank here. And I said, well, wait a minute, Bob, I got, a, I got another radiator. I'll bring that in. Maybe it might be better condition. Maybe it might just need to be rotted out. Maybe it won't need a core. Well, he looked at that one, went through it, and basically, same as the other one, the core leaked and um, the uh, joints where it had been soldered had leaked, but the tank was good. So he went ahead and used the original manual transmission bottom, there's, so there's no trans cooler in it, uh, from the original radiator from the gasser, put a new core in it, and then used the tank from the other radiator that I'd gotten from Tom. And uh, 650 bucks, yeah, they're, they're pricey. You know, it's, it's probably easier to go out and buy an aluminum $250 Chinese special that you see on Marketplace, but um, this thing's period correct. I wanna keep the serial numbers close, I wanted to keep the six cylinder radiator because it's still located in the front six cylinder location. It's, it's got the six cylinder has the hump on it, which helps to get the top radiator hose over the, uh, the uh, radiator support, the core support. Um, and um, you know, it'll be done. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be a nice radiator. I won't have to worry about it for a long, long time. Um, you know, Bob and the guys over there, it's a great, great place just as old school as it gets. I wished I'd taken some pictures, but I know I'll be back there again. So anyway, that's uh, as much as I can remember right now. It looks like I've got a lot of parts to put back together, to put on the car, to get it ready for next weekend, um, get it ready for the Moon Eyes New Year's party. Uh, gonna be a drag race car show, pinstriping display, uh, you know, vendors, uh, everything and uh, gonna be a big event. I'll have uh, uh, Ari Dabernia will be with me, uh, Art from Ari's Live, Ari doesn't, or Ari, Ari Don't Surf, uh, another YouTuber. Um, so Ari will be there, and I believe it or not, I've secured four cameras. So uh, we'll see if we can get them all working. I'm just gonna basically turn them all on, and uh, when we're driving, uh, when we're pulling up to the line, in-car camera stuff, all that, We'll see how it goes, and um, we should uh, hopefully have some good footage. So it um, be great to have you guys along for the ride. If you're not subbed to the channel, uh, hit the sub button, hit the bell. You'll find out when I send out videos. I'm going to try to get uh, one or two a week. Uh, I'm going to try to get shorts out once a week and um, be more consistent with that. But got a lot of footage going on, lots of things happening right now. Lots of things with other cars. Uh, the Del Rey is, uh, is out right now, so that's getting worked on. Uh, 
as soon as this is done, then uh, I'll put this back in the garage and I'll start on the, uh, the Bel Air two-door sedan, my, my street car. So I appreciate uh, all the support I've gotten on the channel. I appreciate my <clears throat> new subscribers and I especially appreciate my, uh, the guys that have been here all along. You guys have been awesome. Uh, enjoy uh, answering all your questions uh, that you post on the videos and um, look forward to what, what lies ahead with the channel and, and stuff we got going on with the cars. So have a good one. Be safe. Take care.